Welcome back now at 849. Today's American Story with Bob Dotson comes from Shoreline, Washington, a place where scientists may have found a way to put the sick, injured, and elderly back on their feet. And it all started with some secondhand toys and a dollar store. It began as just another pipe dream. The kind of wild idea a man can wrap himself around facing his future in a wheelchair. Monty Reed wanted to build a robot that could lift people out of those chairs and let them walk again. A lot of people 20 years ago when I was talking about robot suits, they were like, you know, they, they thought I must have hit my head when I broke my back. During an Army Ranger's training exercise, his parachute collapsed. How close were you to the ground? Mm, about 100 feet. And when you hit the ground, you had a break in your back in five places? Five places. Broken ankle? Broken ankle. And you got up and walked how far? Eight miles. The next day, Monty could not move. Doctors told him he was permanently paralyzed and might spend his life in a wheelchair. To distract himself from the pain and sadness, he started reading science fiction. Robert Heinlein's Starship Troopers. It features a story about a robot you can wear. Monty figured he found his way out of that wheelchair. You know, if I could build a lightweight version of that that can just lift me and then add a computer, and then I could put on the suit and push play. Air from a scuba tank powers the whole rig. Uh, it needs to be simple to operate so that anybody who can drive a powered wheelchair will be able to drive one of these. Here's how it works. The computer records how a person normally walks, then programs man-made muscles to duplicate those actions for someone who is paralyzed. Turns out, Monty never needed it. After decades of rehabilitation, he's made an amazing recovery. I feel like I was given a gift. This research is what he's doing for others with the second chance life gave him. How much did it cost you to build your first prototype? About four bucks. He did not wait for development money. Monty fashioned his first skeleton out of carpenter levels, connected at the knee with an old music CD he'd been using as a coffee coaster. For more advanced models, he borrowed his kid's car seat and hockey shin guards. Wow, this looks like something that Frankenstein would date. How yeah. do you keep from tipping over? Uh, just add a uh, accelerometer, rate gyro, a little software. Speak English. Uh, it's uh, it kind of like a gyroscope. Not slick, but it works. Monty's wearable robot has taken top honors two years running at the International Robo Games lifted and won the, the silver and the gold because we're the only ones there with robot suits. <laughs> Think of this as the Model T version. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Not bad, huh? Of Iron Man's fancy muscle suit. Now more science than fiction. But you had no background in medicine, no background in engineering, and you have a learning disability. Can't do the math. <laughs> uh, engineering's not likely. <laughs> But 40 volunteers, engineers and medical professionals, now come to his workshop twice a week to do what he cannot. You digitalize that and you are animating that little plastic model. Dr. Stephen Steens believes that with a few improvements... We want the ankle to be able to flex. I think that makes perfect sense. These walking robots may be able to really help people. People like him. I think we're on the right track because we have a unique solution to the problem. He hopes to have a model ready for testing in hospitals soon. A home version by the time Monty's daughter Sierra is grown. If you don't get to see how this all turns out, what does that mean to you? It means nothing, Bob. You know why? Because I've already seen it. In my dreams and my visions, I've already seen what the thing looks like 20 years from now. So what was causing the pain? <laughs> He's seen it. It'll be a while before That's why we like may see it yeah. too. Think about uh, how many people are going to be affected. Mm -hmm. 
when we do this. For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, with an American story in Shoreline, Washington. That is wow. amazing. Very Remarkable. Cool. Very cool. And the fact that he can't do math, but yet he can come up with all of that. As you said, exactly. hope for the rest hope of us. Hope for the rest <laughs> of us. Can't well, do that. maybe not all of us, but <laughs> still to come, Michelle Obama's unique take on being the first lady. Plus, the most effective diet trends of the past decade. Hmm. But first, your local news and weather. Woo!